Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game video. Today we're taking a look at a Monorant aggro deck, which is currently seen as a bit of a boogeyman in best of one standard, but it's definitely more of an underdog in Historic Brawl, and part of the reason why is that players start at 25 life as opposed to 20, so those mid-range and control decks have a bigger life total buffer to help against aggro. Another reason is that you have to reveal your commander before the game even starts, so the opponent knows to mulligan into a hand that has more cheap plays and more interaction, to keep up with your aggro deck, so you don't have that surprise factor that you might have in best of one standard. Nevertheless, my early results with Godric have been very promising, so I'm excited to showcase this aggro deck. Godric 3-3 uh, with haste and celebration, saying as long as two or more non-land permanents enter to the battlefield under our control this turn, Godric turns into a 4-4 flying dragon that also has fire breathing, so can pay a red to give it plus one plus so until end of turn. We also have multiple cards that can generate tokens as a way of enabling a celebration on Godric. And then if you look at the curve here, it's kind of like your signal strength on your cell phone. You want to have lots of one drops and then slowly taper off as you increase the curve. And we even have some zero mana cards, starting with Mishra's Bobble, which can essentially replace itself, just a nice way of enabling celebration. And then Mox Amber especially is quite nice in this deck. Not only does Godric enable it as a legendary creature, but we've got a ton more throughout the deck. So this can also give us a nice mana boost as well as enabling celebration. So typically want to hold it until we play Godric in the same turn. And then there's a Beaumont Courier at one mana, can provide plenty of card advantage if it can attack a few times. Embereth Veteran can also enable Celebration later by making a Young Hero roll token. Fanatical Firebrand, good at taking out mana elves from the opponent. Fervent Champion has a few equipment to go with it, can authorize attack as a 1-1 with haste and first strike. Foundry Street Denizen, also perfect in a deck that can generate a bunch of tokens, as we'll be able to increase its power multiple times per turn. Then we've got some cheap removal with Frostbite, of course Lightning Bolt, another staple in any red deck. There's Kumano, which is also quite nice, as it can eventually transform and enable Celebration on turn 3. We've got the Swiss Spear, not too many ways to enable Prowess in this deck, but still good enough to include. There's a Monstrous Rage as a pump spell that can also enable Celebration by making a monster roll token. And there's Phoenix Chick as an evasive 1-1 with haste, and there's plenty of overlap with a standard build of Monored Aggro, of course. Goes to show how many great red cards we've gotten in recent times. Play with Fire, another one of them, can deal 2 damage, potentially let us scry 1. Rabbit Battery, 1-1 one, one with haste, that can be reconfigured to give other creatures plus 1 plus 1 and haste. We've got a Ragavan as an incredibly powerful 1-drop if it can connect with the opponent, as it can snowball additional treasure tokens and card advantage. We've got a reinforced Ronin, 2-2 with haste, that can get some damage in early, but we do have to pick it back up end of turn. So in the late game it's actually a useful way of enabling celebration on a Godric, since we'll always have a 1 mana permanent to redeploy. There's a Village Messenger, a nice card from Innistrad Remastered, 1-1 one, one with haste, and then can easily transform into the Moonrise Intruder, especially if we play it turn 1 and the opponent doesn't have a 1-drop, and then we'll be left with a 2-2 two, two with Menace. Voldaren Epicure can enable Celebration all by itself, making a Blood Token and dealing 1 damage, and then Eater of Virtue, a nice way to enhance our smaller creatures. There's also plenty of creatures with haste in the deck that can pass on their ability onto the Eater of Virtue. And then a Ginger Brute, another haste creature that can get pseudo unblockable if there's a bit of a board stall. And then Sheevan Devastator, not really a one drop, but can also be a nice mana sink in the late game to fly over. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit more removal with a braid, destroying artifacts or dealing 3 damage, and then a lightning strike can deal 3 damage to any target, and then many of our 2 drops are also great at setting up celebration on the following turn. Ether Chaser by making a 1-1 servo token when it attacks can enable celebration on Godric. We've got Battle Cry Goblin, if we enabled pack tactics, can make a 1-1 goblin that's tapped and attacking, so that can also turn Godric into a dragon. We've got the Charming Scoundrel, either making a Wicked Roll or a Treasure Token for Celebration. We've got our uh, Karizaf making Ragavan, so that's also perfect to set up our turn 3 Godric. Magda generates a Treasure Token, which will enable Celebration and gives us more mana. We've got the Raging Battle Mouse, which is another Celebration payoff, giving a creature plus 1 plus 1 if we enabled it, and then also makes it easier to maybe play 1-drop and Godric in the same turn, which will also enable Celebration in the first place. And Wily Goblin also generates a Treasure Token when it enters, so all these 2-drops are perfect alongside Godric. And then there's some other classic 2-drops, such as our Bloodthirsty Adversary, 2-2 to, to Haste, or can sink more mana into it to maybe get back a Burn Spell later. We've got our Earthshaker Kenra, making it difficult for the opponent to block. Can also turnalize it later in the game as a decent mana sink. Felden a 2-2 Haste that can provide card advantage when dealt to damage. And then we've got our Robber of the Rich, which can steal cards from the opponent's deck as well. 
Steamkin can also generate extra mana so we can quickly deploy the rest of our hand. And I don't know the Great Revel can also punish the opponent for casting cheaper spells. And since we're the beatdown, we don't really mind the symmetrical effect. And then we've got a bit of mana acceleration with Arcane Signet, Mindstone, and the Iron Crank. Only playing the two mana artifacts that can immediately tap for mana, since that will make it easier to potentially double spell and enable celebration. Then at 3 mana I could not resist including Blood Moon to punish greedy mana bases, just kind of a fun off to have, not a necessity. And then we've got more Celebration Enablers with Captain Landry making treasure. Fable can also enable Celebration in a multitude of ways, especially if the Shaman survives to make more treasure. Then a Krenko can make an army of goblin tokens and also enable Godric. Legion Warboss makes a 1-1 goblin token turn after turn and can grow them thanks to Mentor. We've got Squee making a 1-1 goblin token that's tapped and attacking. Tybalt can make two 1-1 one -one Devil tokens and also prevents a life gain, which can be helpful in some matchups. And then Annex is a bit more likely to enable celebration during the opponent's turn if our opponent removes our creatures and we get to replace them with Seder tokens, but still great to have in any red aggro deck. Season Pyromancer, if we have a few non-land cards to discard, can also enable celebration by making elemental tokens. And then the Flame of the West is one of our better equipment in this deck, as we can generate an army of spirit tokens that are also tapped and attacking if we equip our legendary creature. So also perfect alongside Godric. And then we also have Bone Crusher Giant, more of a two drop if we use the adventure first. And then Heraldic Banner, pumping our creatures while adding extra mana, also makes it easier to double spell. And then we've got some very hard hitting four drops, such as Hazaret, if we're close to empty handed, can get in as a 5 4 with Indestructible and Haste, that can also deal additional damage with the ability. We've got Chandra, which can add extra mana or be used as removal. Then we've got a Defiler of Instinct, which also makes it easier to empty out our hand, dealing extra damage in the process. Hellrider can also deal a ton of damage if we've got an established board. Rampaging Raptor, good at finishing off Planeswalkers while still going face. And then a Rekindling Phoenix can also potentially enable Celebration if it transforms into the Elemental and then back into the Rekindling Phoenix. And also just a very difficult creature for some decks to deal with. And Torbran, another staple in any red deck, enhancing all our red damage output. And then a couple 5 drops, including Glorybringer, just a nice flyer that can take out opposing creatures. Goldspan Dragon, also perfect for enabling celebration with the treasure token. And Siege Gang Commander as well, can make an army of goblin tokens that we can then fling at the opponent. And last but not least, Ember Cleave, because why not? And then our mana base has a few nice creature lands with Mutavault, Mishra's Foundry, Faceless Haven, Blink Moth Nexus, and Den of the Bugbear. So plenty of activated abilities. These are especially helpful against control when facing multiple sweeper effects. And then there's Castle Ambreth to pump our team. Ramana Ruins can also deal 2 damage to the opponent. Plenty of Snow-Covered Mountains to enable the Frostbite to deal 3 damage as opposed to 2. And then a Crucible can also make some hasty 1-1s. And then finally Nykthos can also potentially give us a nice mana boost since we've got plenty of red permanents. Looking at cards like Eidolon, Wily Goblin, Godric provides to Devotion, their Store Brain. So this can also give us more mana that we can then sink into Godric's ability to Fire Breathe and hopefully finish off the opponents. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Galias, another aggro deck. Our hand is... Not amazing. We've got a couple one drops, Iron Crag, but no real powerful curve topper. So I think we take a Mulligan. Okay, now we've got a Lightning Strike to interact with the opponent, and then Godric plus Mox Amber can maybe set up a turn four Siege Gang. Give it a shot. Turn one Phoenix Chick. Okay, so we'll probably take out their two drop here. Burning Tree, that's a good one. Can let them play another creature. It's gonna be Galia. Alright, so we'll take that out. Could do it now, or wait for them to attack. A Rune Blaster at least can't take out my land. So, yeah, let's uh, Lightning Strike, maybe keep a Braid for later. Take out Galia. And still take five. Could also play Bobble instead of Mox Amber. Could also keep Godric back, but chances of it surviving are pretty slim. Let's have a look. Maybe that'll inform our decision. Forest coming up. So your opponent can replay Galia and attack. We would be taking another 7. 
down to 9. Although next turn we can stabilize with a Siege Gang. Close call. If her opponent just has a removal spell, takes out Godric, hits me for 5. Then I wouldn't be able to play Siege Gang, but I can play a 3-3 Devastator. Yeah, maybe I should hang back. It's just that if her opponent has a bunch of pump spells, blocking's not gonna pay off. It's gonna be their own Devastator. Okay, so at least we stemmed the bleeding a little bit. Could abrade their Devastator and then still have three mana, which doesn't do a whole lot, to be fair. So I think I prefer Siege Gang, take another three in the air. But then now we can actually uh, make a bit of progress. So I could attack with Godric or leave it back for another turn. Now I think I hit for four. Her opponent plays Galia, attacks all out. I've got some decent blocks available. It's going to be Orobrask instead, 4-4. Four, four. So we probably want to chump that one. Orobrask triggers. And rekindling Phoenix I probably wanted to play anyways. So that's fine. And then probably pass with a braid available. Could still send Godric. And I doubt our opponent's double blocking. If they do, we could take out one of their blockers with Siege Gang. Bolt Hound's pretty good. Pumping their team. So we could abrade the Bolt Hound. Could also, instead of taking out Devastator with the Braid, after jumping with the Token, sack with Siege Gang. Or we could use Siege Gang now to kill Bolt Hound. So we've got a couple options. Yeah, I think we let them attack. If we can trade for Urbrask, I would be pretty happy. So line up some blocks. So this would have me taking 8, but we're going to abrade the Devastator. So the question is whether I chump to soak up 2 damage or not. Don't think that's needed. Opponent with Thrash killing Godric on the way out. So now they don't have removal for the egg from Phoenix, so it will come back. And then now, point still at 16, so we've got a long way to go. But we can replay Godric, play Messenger. And then next turn go for a large Devastator. And then I probably keep Messenger back and just attack with Godric. Which we can also pump. And then next turn with Devastator we can potentially present lethal, we'll see. It's gonna be an escape for card draw, finding a bunch of lands. Atarkas command would be pretty bad for me here. Puts me to one, although we can still block to survive. So it goes for Robber, does have reach, so it can actually block some of our flying creatures. Opponent hangs back, Chandra the draw. So what's the play here? If I play Chandra, I could take out Robber of the Rich, still play Devastator X equals 2, and then we're attacking the opponent for 10 in the air. And then, yeah, I guess they only have one blocker, so we can finish them off if we attack all out. Yeah, that works. You and I, are gonna take them out. See ya. I 
Xaxes. Boltown can get in front of our 1 1s and still hit him for 11 exactly. Well, this game could not have been any closer. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gix, Yogmoth, Praetor. So we can expect lots of cheap creatures, some removal. And uh, yeah, Underrail can be one of our better tools in the matchup, giving us something to equip our creatures over and over. Not the best at blocking their creatures, admittedly. But with another Snowland, Frostbite could be a one-mana answer to Gix. So I'll give it a shot. And then Denison into Felden, probably to start out. And Braid, another answer. They probably have some removal in hand here. Either cut down or fatal push. Nope, get in for four. And a dark ritual. Okay, so four mana here for Phyrexian Obliterator. Well, that's about as good as it gets against the red aggro. So that's a problem. Can still play Godric, and that will increase our devotion. And then we can try to fly over, especially using our Underill. But if they remove Godric, we're out of luck. Mindstone into Null Priest is acceptable. At least the Obliterator is kind of forced to hang back. So Nykthos adds four, five, so I can play and equip. So yeah. Can fly over with Godric now. Well, if we can beat a uh, turn to Frexen Obliterator with our mono red deck, that's probably a good sign. But there's still a long way to go here. So Gix is next. And Null Priest gets in for two. And an Aetherborn, more life gain. Annex is decent too. So let's see here. If I attack all out, I have eight. Make two more tokens, nine, ten. And then we can just sink all our mine into Pumping Godric, so that should just be game here. No need to play anything else, since the two spirits are enough to enable celebration. Opponents tapped out. Well, this was pretty impressive. Beating turn two Obliterator with the red deck. And with a bit of damage to spare. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, Grixis Control. So we want to be off to a quick start, punish the maybe greedy mana base that has a few tap lines. This has a few too many 4-drops, which I don't think is what we want. Okay, this I can keep. Turn 1 Ronin, turn 2 either Adversary or Iron Crag. Iron Crag could set up turn 3 Raptor, also good at finishing off Planeswalkers. And speaking of Planeswalkers, now we could potentially set up a turn 3 Chandra, still add mana, play Adversary. Yeah, seems worth a shot, even though it could get countered here. Possible they just have creature removal, in which case it's also better to deploy Planeswalker. Awesome. I will play Adversary. And that might get removed here. It does not. So do we bobble now? Yeah, I think we do. I wouldn't mind drawing an extra land. And we shouldn't struggle to enable Celebration for Godric. Okay, Tailsend, good to know about. So they can counter my Legendaries now. But we might just see them play Nicol Bolas. Which we can answer with Chandra. So no big deal. And then what to discard? Can discard Reinforced Ronin or Magda. Those are kind of the cards I'm considering. 
So Chandra takes out Nicol Bolas. Might be our window to deploy some legendaries. Could also go Ronan plus Godric. So yeah, either way, Magda's probably the pick. Faceless Haven's also nice. Creature lines in general good against control. So let's take care of Nicol Bolas. And then I don't mind Godric plus Ronin, and we could even Monstrous Rage. I guess never mind, we don't have enough uh, red mana for that. But yeah, Godric plus Ronin looks good. And then I don't think we want to transform just yet. Although that's certainly a close call. Iron Crank's still helpful for activating Den of the Bugbear. Not as useful for Faceless Haven. Their opponent's down to 13. Facing Planeswalker, two creatures. Two creature lands, Brotherhood's Ends. Probably about as good as it gets here. Answering Planeswalker and our two creatures. So let's try and get back on the board with a Rampaging Raptor. And then we can still play a Ronin. This first in case of a Sensor. Hit for six. Bones at seven. And next turn, we could potentially present lethal. Epicure also way of enabling celebration on Godric by itself. Yeah, let's say our opponent taps out for a planeswalker. Then with a land, I could even monstrous rage then of the bugbear to present lethal. Yeah, there's the uh, five mana dragon god. Takes out Raptor. No land, sadly. So no three snow mana to attack with Haven. Could just animate Den, which is still quite good here, since it can finish off Nicol Bolas. And put our opponent to four. And then now we've got something we can maybe Monstrous Rage. Phoenix is also quite good in the matchup as a creature that they pretty much need to exile to get rid of it. Or point two removal spells added. So they can replay Nicol Bolas. It's gonna be an Invoke Despair. Not too bad. Still two mana for Tails Ends, but we're just not gonna play Godric here. So play a land. So I could play Reinforced Ronin, attack. Present lethal with Monstrous Rage. Or we could, let's say, play Phoenix, and then if they counter it, I can still Ronin plus Monstrous Rage, and the coast will be clear. Alright, opponent did not have a response. So now the question is, do we go for lethal with Monstrous Rage, or do I just deal two in case of spot removal, and then Epicure puts them to one? And I don't really see us losing from that position either. Right, opponent doesn't seem to have anything. They can counter the trigger with Tails End, I suppose, but that's fine by me. Yep, opponent stays at two. We've got Ronan back in hand, also good against sweepers. Oracle of the Alpha doesn't bother me. And that does it. Yeah, turn two Iron Crag setting up turn three Chandra was quite powerful in this matchup. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali. Always a scary matchup. What do we think of our hand? Definitely need a third land, but yeah, otherwise this hand's quite promising. Phoenix Chick into Karizev. Tybalt helps us go wide to set up Embercleave. Might even make use of Nykthos to generate a bit of extra mana. So, yeah, as long as we find another mountain here, we should be okay. Being on the play also helps. Can expect the opponent to have some 2-mana ramp into some 4-mana ramp and then cast a turn for Itali. No land yet. But now we can play Veteran at the very least. Land would be much better, though. There we go. No two mana rain from the opponent, so it might be removal instead. Enable celebration. Opponent's already down to 15. 
and Nykthos will generate extra mana for us next turn, so I can maybe play Defiler into Veteran, which is another way of enabling Celebration. Alright. Can also look into Ember Cleave as an option. So if I play Defiler, I can still play Veteran using the Phyrexian cost. Deal one, maybe just upstairs. And then we can actually Ember Cleave for a single red mana after smashing with everyone, since we have four attackers, so discount down to two and make it one with a Defiler. And I think this is just game. One upstairs, this will deal. Yep, this is 10 damage with Godric himself. And then two more, make it three. I guess our opponent falls to one here, potentially. But uh, yeah, very much on the back foot, and with Defiler we can easily finish them off. So this was about as good as it gets for this red aggro deck. Turn one, one drop, turn two, Karizef. Nykthos generating extra mana, set up Godric, and then Defiler, pretty nice here, especially alongside Embercleave. So this is pretty awesome, not gonna lie. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Loyal Bodyguard. Could be a tough matchup. Our hand starts with Kumano into Ether Chaser. Yeah, if we can find a red source for Godric on three, this hand is pretty decent. So I'll give it a shot. Three power first strike would be able to attack past the bodyguard. And then Ether Virtue can enhance our creatures as well. Defiler, another first strike creature, good against green. Still missing an extra red land. So, I guess worst case scenario, play Eater Equip next turn. Multiple ways to set up a second permanent entering for Godric between the token and Kumano. Opponent without green mana. Now we can play Signet. And then still attack. If our opponent blocks etching, I can finish off Karizev with a Frostbite. That seems okay. So yeah, let's attack, and then I'm not going to make a token with Ether Chaser yet, since I may need it to enable Godric. So let's attack. And then if they don't block, I can go Signet plus Ether Virtue instead. Opponent blocks. Okay, so next turn we'll have the mana for Godric, and Ether Chaser can enable Celebration for us. If they take out Ether Chaser, I'll be a little sad that I didn't make the token. It's gonna be Bodyguard. Still a red mana available. Okay, let's go for it. So fly over for four, probably deal another three, opponent at twelve. And then if we find a land we can play Defiler, which can set up Goldspan on the following turn. Another way of enabling Godric. Okay, Rishkar's pretty good. Count from Bodyguard and on itself. So now Ether Chaser no longer has a great attack and Bolt's gonna make sure of it. But now a Braid on Rishkar looks good. Ooh, Mox Amber. Even better. So now we can enable Godric with Ether Virtue if we'd like, or we can just play Defiler. Fly over with Godric. Problem is Rishkar plus Bodyguard gives him access to quite a bit of mana next turn. So I think it's still safer to a Braid and then hope to draw land for next turn. And then I can equip Etching, so it can maybe attack past Bodyguard next turn. Okay, fair enough, opponent sacking Bodyguard. So now Rishkar is indestructible, but then we'll just equip Godric with uh, Eater of Virtue, so it can hit for six. And then if we draw land, Goldspan can maybe close out the game for us, since an attack alongside Godric would give it flying. It's gonna be Domri. Could fight Godric, would be a trade. Where do you see my mates? 
an intervention to make Rishkar indestructible, but now our opponent's out of blockers, so they would still be in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, Eater of Virtue could also exile Godric, means we can't replay it, but then at least our Eater also grinds haste. And then our opponent would be taking uh, lethal if we animate our Blink Moth Nexus, assuming we also have the mana to equip Eater, which Mox Amber is no longer active. So we actually needed to draw a land to guarantee lethal, so we can animate Blink Moth, equip Eater, attack. But yeah, either way we're in pretty good shape since we can at the very least finish off Domri and get a nice bit of damage in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Tatiova, blue-green landfall deck. We've got a braid to answer Tatiova, some mana acceleration. Yeah, this could work out. It's gonna be a little awkward if we don't find our third land. Okay, now with the Grazer, they've got a nice start. I think we still go Kumano into Felden, as opposed to turn to Mindstone. Which would maybe help with the ramping out Goldspan Dragon. And could have been a reason to hold on to Kumano until we can guarantee get value from the plus one counter. So, pretty interesting turn two here. Opponent without an extra land. Well, now I'm actually more incentivized to play this Mindstone, I think. Even though we miss out on the plus one counter. Felden can still attack by his Grazer once we play Banner. And I kind of just want to get this gold span in play as quickly as possible. Fabled Passage will get a tapped Island, most likely. Turn 1 Grazer, but not the best follow-up so far. Could play Godric next turn as well. Although I'm kind of lacking Banner plus Fervent Champion, perhaps. Or with a land, Banner plus Felden would be even better. Battle Mouse. Battle Mouse doesn't quite help me deploy Banner here. Could go Battle Mouse plus Felden. But let's just get the Banner going. And then next turn, with the lands, play Goldspan. Or at the very least, go Battle Mouse plus Godric. Can be channeled for more forests. Embercleave's gonna be nice too. Alright, time for the Battle Mouse. And then let's make sure to tap our mana properly. And pump Champion to attack Pass Grazer. Although they might jump Godric anyway. Nope, opponent jumping etching is strange since they could have blocked the flying creature here. Grazer does have reach. So I don't think they'll be playing Tantiova this turn since we can take it out before it gives any value. Provisioner makes sense. Makes a treasure. And they're looking at Godric. Imprisoned in the moon, a nice answer for opposing commanders as they will essentially be shut down for the rest of the game. But luckily, we also get an extra mana, which helps us cast Goldspan Dragon, which we can play alongside Embercleave here, since we'll be attacking with plenty of creatures. Goldspan makes two extra mana, and that should be game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this is going to be a true test up against Adlin, one of the best aggro commanders out there. What do we think of this hand? It's a lot of kind of 2-2 creatures that don't line up well against Adlin, so I don't think I'm keeping. This is a little bit better, especially the Phoenix flying over could help. Don't have the best way of enabling Celebration turn 3, but Squeak can maybe set it up. Turn 1 Soldier, at least we're monocolored, so it's not gonna gain much life. They can trade for Adversary. But then they're not trading for Squee. So it's probably going to be Squee into Phoenix here. And then hope they cannot exile the Phoenix. Opponent takes it. Adlin will enter with a plus one counter. And then they can immediately attack, making a 2 2 human. Nope, opponent missing a land here. Goes for Guardian. 
which can now hold off some of our creatures. We can also become indestructible, and our opponent's got plenty of cards they can discard. Okay, so now what? Play Phoenix and pump the brakes, probably. And then next turn we can look into Godric flying over as well. Lieutenant bumps a team, also very good alongside Adlin. Opponent passes. Okay, so Kenra cannot prevent the Guardian from blocking. So instead I could use the Veteran to create a Young Hero roll, which would also give Godric flying. Although Young Hero doesn't really have a great place to go. Could also play with Fire the Metallic Mimic before it provides more value. And then for now play Felden. So they cannot block a 1-1 with it. Even though it removes the option of maybe using Play with Fire to finish off Guardian, they would just make it indestructible. So I'll attack all out. They can block a 1-1, block Squee most likely. And then we still hit them for a healthy amount. And then next turn I can maybe make the play of Godric plus Young Hero roll to attack in the air. Giant Killer just played for one mana. Yeah. Missing that third land drop. It's gonna make a huge difference. Tybalt could prevent life gain, but I think we can just go for the throat here. Godric plus Hero Roll. And the young hero roll looks at toughness, so we can actually grow the rekindling phoenix. And this should present lethal. Nine damage, exactly. Unless our opponent's got a sword to plowshares, and that's game. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali, Primal Conqueror, Red Green Ramp. Our hand is missing a second land, so I don't think we can keep, unfortunately. Even though Bauble replaces itself. Yeah, I'm sort of convincing myself. We've got two draw steps to find a land, play Signet, can bolt right away, maybe take out a mana creature. And then Godric plus Annex. Annex plus Embercleave is also pretty good. Let's try it. Alright, let's have a peek and see what they're working with. Gonna be a key to the archive, so they've got some 4 mana ramp. Did not find a land yet, so it's gonna be a sweat next turn to see if we can play Signet. Ginger Brute is gonna have to be the play, so did not quite pan out, sadly. Swiftfoot Boots, okay, and then there's a land now. At least next turn we'll have access to some of our three drops. And our opponent did not ramp in the meantime, so they're not off to the fastest start. Laura Hedron, I'm happy to bolt. And then I'm kind of lacking Annex over Godric here, or do I? Opponent's gonna play key next turn. Could also just jam Rampaging Raptor, to be fair. Maybe that's just a play. Since we don't have a ton of red devotion for Annex yet. And there's key, so next turn we could see a tally. So it would be good to get a flying threat going or something that can maybe attack past Itali, especially with an Ember Cleave. Hope they don't find a Day of Judgment. Okay, Aligning Helix, what they found with Key, immediately discard it. So now we can go Denison plus Annex or plus Godric to enable Celebration. Another close call, to be fair. I think I'm kind of liking Annex to set up the Amber Cleave still. Even though we miss out on a bit of damage this turn. Also would be difficult to enable Celebration for Godric next turn, unless I hold the Denison. And Annex also gives us a bit of insurance in case of a sweeper. So a 7 mana acquired. And a spiteful bandit tree to wipe the board. Okay, so we do get a bunch of tokens here from Annex at least. 
So play Godric, attack all out versus Embercleave, which is not all that effective on a 1 1 creature. So Godric it is. And then Lightning Strike plus Stomp from Bonecrusher can close out the game. So unless they gain some life here, we should be in the clear. There's Itali finding Loam Speaker and Battle Mouse. They can have those. <laughs> yeah, missed our second land drop, but it does not matter. This Monored deck keeps winning. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Monorad Mirror up against Annex. Okay, that's going to be a challenge. Our hand is decent. Don't expect Steamkin to necessarily survive, but it's worth a shot. Best thing to do against Annex is to just outrace it without killing too many creatures. And uh, yeah, our hand could potentially do that. Especially if we find some more big flyers. I think it's still worth it to deploy Steamkin, even though Karizef gives me more damage alongside Godric. It's actually a close call. Steamkin's easier for the opponent to remove as well. But the earlier we play it, the better. Crater Maker, and that's fine. So play Godric and just attack with Godric. If they want to spend a mana activating Crater Maker, that's fine by me. And then next turn we've got ample ways of enabling Celebration. For now Annex, that's fine. Only a 3-3. So we will be able to play Scoundrel and Karizev. Pumping Steamkin up to a 4-4. And then I also have the option of putting a Wicked Roll on Godric, which is probably the way to go here. Enhance our Flyer as much as possible. Hit for 9. Don't expect the opponent to chump. And then I could still use Steamkin for mana, second main. But let's wait. Channeling Crucible, certainly an option. Opponent attacks all out. Yeah, if there's a sweeper incoming, so be it. This is a 4-mana Amber Cleave. Pretty sure we kill them on the way back. Alright, damage happens. Banner, second main. So there's still 2 mana left. And get to untap. Okay, now I'm kind of liking make mana. Play Raptor. Opponent could kill Steamkin with Crater Maker, I suppose, but that's fine. And then I could still channel Crucible for two mana, or play Epicure, which grows Steamkin some more. Or I guess do both. It's an embarrassment of riches. Alright, so out of Crater Maker range. And let's just channel. Don't expect any instant speed sweepers for two mana. Attack all out. I guess we could leave Firebrain back and just activate it in case that works out to be better. Is this a Witch Talker Frenzy? Fling. Fair enough. Alright. Seder tokens don't get to block, so this is still more than enough for lethal. Awesome. Turn 2 Steamkin paid off. So yeah, this uh, Godric deck can't seem to lose any games. 
which is a good quality for any Magic the Gathering deck as it turns out. So I can highly recommend Godric as your 1v1 Brawl Commander. Of course in multiplayer it's going to be a bit weaker when there's multiple opponents you need to take care of, but as far as 1v1 goes, Godric seems like one of the best commanders I've seen in a long time, and uh, currently also dodges the Hell Q as opposed to Ragavan, so probably even a better choice than the one mana Monkey Pirate. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.